Okay, so these are MC4 connectors that we normally see on solar equipment and solar stuff. This is a, uh, a two into one connector thing. So this is what normally comes with the DM145 panels. If you were able to get any off Amazon.com before they stopped selling them in the 2013. But these connectors work about the same way. Now in another video, I explained how to do it yourself on a little Y connector here. But what happens a lot of times is you're going to get you're going to have to splice cable, and if you want to standardize these types of connectors, which are used with the building codes on solar stuff, you got to be able to crimp them in place. Now there are special high cost of crimping tools. A lot of people who do this full time all day every day are going to have those. Most of us at the hobby level will not. So. What you would do is you would use a common uh, wire crimping uh, stripping tool to uh, strip back the insulation roughly an inch or so. On the MC4 connector, it's actually kind of complex. They're also mostly standardized industry-wide among different makers, but not fully standardized. Parts that are going to be different are the little twisty knobs and the little sealer things on the inside, which are, which are uh, this right here. And what this does is this pinches down around the cable as this gets tightened and will hopefully create a waterproof seal on the inside. MC4 connectors also partly industry standard because they have O-rings, which are a connector. But deep down inside of an MC4 connector are basically... A, a, a bullet and socket type wire connector assembly where these things slide together. There's no locking mechanism per se, it's just the tightness of the connection. Now every time you pull apart and redo one of these, there's a possibility of, of having a, a, a lower quality connection. However, these are a long enough type of a shaft assembly where you can see you get about a half inch of overlap, a little over, maybe, maybe a centimeter of overlap. The reason you'll have other room in there is because the wire reaches up inside of it. Now on what's normally the male side of the inner wire actually ends up being on the female side of the outer wire. So it's difficult to call these things a male-female arrangement. But basically the slightly larger square one gets the internal uh, male thing here. And then that would go of course on the end of a splice wire. And when you put this on the end of a spliced wire, you can actually insert the wire all the way up the shaft of this thing. That's never going to become an issue with making it fit later on. And then you'll, on 99 out of 100 of these designs, you're going to have the two little tabs here. And if you're going to be bending this by hand with, well, let's say, this type of a crimper or a Leatherman tool or maybe a vice grip, you want to get it really nice and tight. Tightness is going to give you a higher quality connection. Some people will solder at this point, but that's still relatively rare. What you'll do is you don't want to fold these things together and then have them get in the way and stuff. What you want to do is fold one and then fold the other one over it and then tighten everything. The other thing is at this little area right uh, between the shaft and the little ears, I want to give that a pinch too and what we're going to do is we're trying to make that wire turn just a little bit so it's really nice and firm if you get any wiggle on that kind of thing what you want to do is you want to just give it a good little twist again uh, bring a tab down a little bit don't use the cutting edge and try to get that where there's no wiggle at all again lack of a wiggle means you're going to have a higher quality connection Hopefully it's coming through on a camera here. You'll see little one-way tabs on here. And uh, what this is, is uh, this helps you lock in when you put the plastic piece on. Now as we've done this, before we put the plastic piece on, we want to put the collar and a little waterproofing nut on here. Uh, they go on in sequence. And you can put these on after you've done your crimping but uh, it helps to uh, put them on ahead of time and they have to go in this sequence so that this thing goes in first this thing goes in second and then we snap everything in place once we snap it in place it's pretty hard to pry back out so you want to make sure you got things right if we're doing a Y connector generally speaking what we're going to have is uh, we want to be able to put the opposite type 
uh, we've got the double, which is going to, this one in, is according to the DM Solar is going to take two positives. We're going to put uh, this type of connector on the other end because that's the type that would snap into these. There is compatibility from brand to brand, so you can see how these two are slightly different from each other. But the way they'll plug in works the same. It's just this has these little additional ears to assist in pinching these little things so that you would be able to unplug it later on. So with this crimped in place, we will slide this in until it snaps. And you may be able to hear it snap on the camera. There we go. It snapped in place. It's not going to pull out. We made sure everything else was tight. The other thing I noticed, depending on brand to brand, sometimes that these things may not seat correctly and then when you go to tighten them down, they never got waterproof or they never seated. So I like to seat that by hand first and then we'll bring this up and we're going to hand tighten it. Sometimes with different crimping tools and crimp wrenches, they always, uh, use a wrench. Now if you can hear that, it's actually ratcheting. Okay, it's ratcheting in place. We're going to ratchet this in place. And when you buy brand new solar panels, a lot of times they'll have it on there. And if people at the factory, for whatever reason, they didn't tighten that in. Not all makes and models are going to ratchet in place. But here, what I've done is I took some cables. They came with a regular cable end. Some people use a ring connector. But if you're going to use the MC4 standardized stuff, you're going to end up installing some of these yourself. Pricing on a pair, a lot of times all over the map. Assume that you're going to spend anywhere from two to six dollars for a pair of these cables. And the other thing is you're going to run into some issues on what gauge of cable these things are going to work with. But expect to be able to work with anything from eight to twelve gauge cable. If you're going to work with anything with a thicker diameter than eight gauge cable, you may be required to use different type of connectors by reality. Although the building codes remain the same, Getting a 6 gauge cable to work with this type of a connector assembly gets a little tricky and may require a, a different head assembly that's capable of taking the thicker cable but would still have the ends that work like this. The other thing to keep in mind is, is that when we're placing the, uh, the inner, inner connector on a shaft and we've got the one, we've got kind of a male female side here. The one that becomes the male side or on the larger setup like this one was. When that goes on here, what's going to happen is we want to make sure that we don't have that wire going up the center so far that it's going to interfere with this thing. So with here, we're, we're, we're going to have a limit on that just to make sure we can plug these in all the way because if there's any blockage, what will happen is these things won't click right. It, it may crimp its way in a little bit, but you want to make sure you're getting your, your, your crimping depth right. It's more sensitive on this side than it is on this side. When it's all said and done, you end up with the ability to daisy chain your solar panels. But remember, you're also going to run into some amperage limitations. So on larger arrays and larger solar panels, you, we may be doing it differently. On the small portable setups where you're not using my system of using AC style plugs, this can work. It can also work on the small cabin setups and a small grid tie function.